Hi everyone, welcome to the Evolution Exchange webinar. I'm Nick, I lead the internal recruitment team here at Evolution. So in case you don't know, we're a tech recruitment business based in Warrington and we've got overseas offices in Australia, Singapore, Germany and very soon to be the USA, which is really exciting. So if you're here, then you're interested in hearing about what it's like to be a recruiter working directly with the NHS and the exciting opportunities that we currently have available. So we've got you for about 45 minutes today. So for the first part of that, we'll be joined by Bernie, who is the uh, she heads up our NHS division here at Evolution. So she'll be able to explore what a career recruiting for the NHS looks like at Evolution and how much it's changed over the last couple of years. We'll then be joined by Brad and Alex to discuss their team strategy, the skills that make them successful and what an average day looks like for an NHS recruiter at Evolution. We then will open up the floor to any questions. So please put your questions in the panel on the right hand side and we'll get around to answering them later on. So firstly, let's welcome Bernie. So hi, Bernie. Hi, Nick, how are you doing? Good, thanks, are you? Yeah, not too bad at all. Good, good. So to give Bernie a little introduction, so she's, she's very busy. She um, founded Hair Plus Data. She's the co-curator for Manchester One Health Tech. She's a mentor for women in recruitment. She leads our NHS division. And on top of that, she's a mum with three. So I don't know how she fits it all in, but somehow she does. So this is Bernie. Oh, thanks for that lovely introduction, Nick. No problem. So for those of you that don't know, Bernie, what is it that you do for the NHS? Um, just put in really basic, simple terms, we deliver interim talent, um, people that have a focus on digital skills um, into the NHS. So the NHS is our, our only customer. That's that's our focus. It's our niche. And those people are working on programs of work that have a technical focus so they are connected to IT digital program and project management um, and we work with a range of NHS customers across the whole of the um, the UK okay. so it might be a hospital it might be a mental health trust it might be a commissioning support unit but all of our customers are the National Health Service. Okay brilliant so the, in terms of the relationship you've, that you've got with Evolution, the NHS has with Evolution, so do you work directly with the NHS? We do, um, and we do that via several frameworks. So the frameworks are there um, to, um, I suppose, give some rigour and um, some sort of audit trail to the organisations that the NHS actually work with. So um, we do that via the Crown Commercial Service Frameworks. Um, we do interface directly with the NHS, but mm -hmm. we do that via these frameworks. So that's called G Cloud DOS, which is Digital Outcome Solutions, and something with a very catchy title called the RM6160 framework. Um, and all of our work is guided by those frameworks, but all yeah. of our interactions are directly with the stakeholders within the NHS. Yeah. Okay. And how did it come about then? How did you get started recruiting for the NHS? Um, I've been in recruitment for 17 years and uh, the first nine of that were with a company called Morgan Hunt and that was a public sector recruitment company. Um, I left there after having um, my three children um, and moved to an IT, a private sector IT rec recruitment company. Um, and I suppose this then was the sort of the natural, uh, I suppose, merging of those two skill sets. Um, I joined Evolution with a view to develop our private sector contract offering on IT mm -hmm. um, and did that really successfully for a year or so before the pandemic hit. And then yep. when the pandemic hit, um, gradually a lot of our customers were saying, look, we don't actually need these contractors anymore. So I suppose I could either sit there and sort of twiddle my thumbs and think, oh, it will all come back or think of another way to diversify. And um, as luck would have it, the frameworks were up for renewal. So uh, myself and a couple of people internally spent a long time actually getting us onto those frameworks. And I'm really, really glad we did because we had one of the most successful years I've I've ever had in recruitment last year. So hence, hence the growth stage now. Yeah, absolutely. No, it's been it's been great. So how much would you say it's changed since you started then? The, how much has recruitment changed? As in how much in the 17 years that I've been doing it sort of at the start? Yeah. And I suppose how much it's changed since, you know, joining Evolution now, the, the, the new strategy that you've got and stuff, really. 
Okay, so I think if I'm going back sort of 17 years ago, um, recruitment was really, really male dominated. Um, I was one of the only um, females, uh, female didn't really last very long in recruitment, if I'm honest. So there definitely wasn't very many um, females in sort of leadership positions. So I always thought when I got to that position, I'd really be interested in um, growing those underneath me in, in you know, uh, girls in particular, but, you know, everyone um, sort of beneath me. And I think it was very much sort of sink or swim. Um, you were really sort of thrown in the deep end, not an awful lot of training and investment um, and a lot of cold calling um, and a lot of, um, you know, just sort of see how you go, just just do it and not really, an yeah. awful, you had some great leaders, but not an awful lot of guidance. They had jobs of their own and they weren't sort of, you know, coaching and side by siding. I think management style was very much sort of stick, not carrot. Um, and and I, I just think things have moved on so much um, in terms of um, balance. Like we used to work, you know, if you were late, if you got in at eight o'clock and, you know, it was definitely frowned on to, upon to leave before 5.30. There's lots of flexibility now with how we work and you're sat there working from home today, Nick, and you'll yeah. be one of many people that are doing that at Evolution today. Um, we've all just got really accustomed, haven't we, to being able to conduct our daily lives on on Teams or Zoom or whatever, you know, medium that is. Um, it was very formal back in the day, sort of, you know, five days a week in the office in a suit, um, you know, everyone wearing their trainers now and you know just a little bit more relaxed um I also think that the way that we dealt with our customers was really really transactional you know you just mm -hmm. wanted to put someone in um and and sort of you know send the bill and, and sort of get out of there on to the next one but we've really really changed the way that we work from being transactional through to now relationship led and some of our customers we're working with on a truly sort of partnership basis which just makes the whole process a lot more enjoyable a lot yeah. more fulfilling um, and you know better for staff to work in that environment yeah um, definitely yeah. No, thanks. And you mentioned there about your strategy and the way that you work now. So what is it? What makes your strategy unique? Um, we've so if I if I sort of think about the additional things I do other than the rec recruitment job, which you mentioned. So um, I started Her Plus Data about four years ago, um, and that was really because I wanted to personally develop and personally grow so I was challenging myself to sort of uh, speak at meetups and um, you know, sort of run a, a community that could actually help me in terms of a candidate base within my, my job commercially um, so that led me on to being able to um, run events and and sort of manage communities that's enabled me to then I suppose look a bit different to the as from the average recruiter set um, yeah. uh, me apart but then sets my team apart as well um, and given us a lot of credibility. Um, we also have a strategy, which is our insight led approach to um, rather than sort of do traditional cold calling and business development, we will be um, our strategy is to approach people to either do an article or an interview with us um, or appear on one of our podcasts and, and talk to us about the challenges that they're facing. We'll put a panel of people onto a podcast together. We'll build a relationship with them. And mm -hmm. sort of after the fact, then ask them um, if we can do business with them. But by that point, they know us. And yeah. so the doing business with this seems an awful lot easier than just that sort of very cold transactional phoning someone, asking them, you know, can they do business and being told no. There's more of a reason to work with us. Um, our podcast series is super, super successful. I think we've got about 40 episodes and growing all oh, the wow. time. The different channels are things like um, the challenges of, our, of CIOs and the challenges that they're facing. We've done a series on female leadership. Um, I did 77 interviews um, for that, for wow. that series. Um, and you can imagine that you get sort of quite close to these people that you're talking to about the challenges that they faced in their career. And so the natural progression is for them to work with you to deliver people because you've already spoken about people challenges on another level. Um, yeah. So I think that's probably the main difference in terms of our strategy and the things that sets us apart from your average recruitment company. Fab. It definitely sounds like it's working wonders for you, for you and your team. So on that note, we'll invite um, Alex and Brad to join us now. So um, Alex and Brad both joined us as graduates just over two years ago. Fresh-faced grads they were. Um, 
So just getting to join us. Hi, Alex. Hello, Beth. How are you doing? Hello. Hi, Hi Brad. Hello. 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 So um, firstly, I suppose, you know, mentioned then that you've joined us as graduates. So what did you both study? So I'll ask you first, Alex. Yeah, thanks, Nick. Um, so I studied sports marketing at Leeds. So I was over there for three years. Um, prior to that, I was doing A-levels just at my, my sixth form. Um, and then after that, joined Evolution. Okay, fab. And what about you, Brad? What did you study? I studied a law degree at the University of Law in Manchester. Um, similar to Alex, I studied at you know local sixth form college as well and did A-levels prior to that. Um, okay. Fresh out of uni and straight into Evolution. Great. So you both, neither of you had any experience or prior knowledge of the NHS or recruitment before you joined Evolution? Nope, nothing. Nope. Um, no knowledge around recruitment or more specific around, you know, IT recruitment within the NHS. Nothing, nothing yeah. to, to my knowledge. No. So I suppose in terms of, you know, from joining as those fresh faced grads to now, you know, you've had huge success within the NHS team. I'm like a proud mom. I say this all the time when I'm speaking to candidates. It's amazing to see the full circle that, you know, you've joined with no experience. You've gone through our progression plan and we're now hiring for your team. And it, it really is amazing. So yeah, you should both be very proud. Thank you, Nick. Um, so in terms of, you know, we'll get into a bit more of the, the types of things that you're working on daily. So Alex, can you tell us about some of the projects that you've worked with on in the NHS? And I suppose the impact that it's had on the NHS yeah, um, of course. Service that you've delivered. Of course. Um, there's a few really that I think are worth highlighting. So obviously we have our customers who take one or two from us in terms of contract numbers, but then there's also times where we are delivering, you know, full full teams into a project. Um, a few of the most, you know, noticeable ones or, or relevant ones the past two years, we've supported a lot around the vaccine rollout for a national NHS body. Um, that has been supporting one of the, the largest PMO functions that the country's ever seen in a, in a way so knowing that you're directly involved with a, an actual national program is is really rewarding um, a few of the other ones that are, are quite you know notable and what's taking a lot of my time at the moment um, is supporting some really technical teams around an EPR rollout which is an electronic patient record system again it's the largest um, rollout the UK's ever seen and we are lucky to be that provider who is delivering that technical talent we have been on a number of occasions as well being sort of trusted and being able to be the sole delivery provider of some of these projects and that just allows us to become much more embedded within the organizations um, so we do much more along the lines of creating marketing campaigns and sitting in on interviews allowing us to become basically a true partner to these organizations so th there's quite a few that are noticeable um, things around covid as well we worked on the sms delivery alerts for when covid vaccines came out and covid um, notifications so there's been quite a few over the past two years that have been quite highlighted in the news which has been really exciting to work on for me wow sounds great thank you for sharing nice. and brad what about you then can you tell us a bit more about some of the work that you've done with the nhs i suppose like which projects you're maybe most proud of sure there's definitely two that are the absolute standouts for me i would say um the first one is the rpa center of excellence um so it was the first center of excellence in the nhs alongside one other that was stood up about 18 months ago by nhsx and essentially, you know, just to give you a little bit of a run through, it was focused around accelerating the use of something called robotics process automation across the whole NHS. So a national program. Um, essentially, the key focus here is automating certain tasks that are carried out by NHS staff, you know, stuff that's really mundane and repetitive so that they can spend their time elsewhere and, and focus on the stuff that's real priority. Um, we partnered up with the organisation very much like a partnership relationship. Um, we provided the full SLT and delivery team. And I think the big thing for me really is that RPA is a hugely innovative technology. The NHS has got you know, a little bit of a, it's got a little bit of a name for itself for using legacy technologies and using archaic ways of working. This totally displaces that. You know, it's a really forward thinking use of tech. Um, and yeah, just really proud to be involved with it, to be honest with you. It's you know, especially my partner, someone who works in the NHS, I know at some point she will benefit from RPA in the future. And so will her colleagues, especially for someone who, you know, is on the front line under a lot of stress. So that's, that's the, the, the biggest one for me. Um, another one that was really important, I would say, has been the NHS Wales 111 web platform redesign. Um, so, you, you know, if you've got a non-emergency medical condition, your natural you know, course of action, as they will say, is to phone 111. But especially after COVID, that service was under a lot of strain. So the 
particularly in the Welsh region, their focus was around, you know, how can we make that more efficient, stop people ringing up the phone line so much and save, you know, a lot more time of clinical staff, you know, NHS staff, essentially. Um, essentially, the programme was focused around restructuring that uh, web platform that they have for the 111 website and creating more services on that website so they didn't actually have to pick up the phone. Um, we provided the full sort of delivery team function around that. The remarks that came out with that program as it's running right now is that it's one of the best program teams that they've had in there. And they're, you know, doing some really true good work, which is something to be really proud of from my side. Wow. Thanks for sharing, Brad. That's great. So, Bernie, what about you then? Are there any standout projects that you'd like to mention, you know, on, on top of these? I think the ones that are sort of quite dear to my heart are the ones that you can really have a, a tangible outcome with improving patient safety, patient care, because we're all going to be a patient at some point or a member of your family is going to be a patient at some point. So those really sort of resonate with me. Um, I echo Brad in that I absolutely love the fact that robotic process automation is um, there's so many applications for that in the NHS and you can really see where time can be saved and efficiencies can be made both on clinical systems as well as uh, sort of more the back office office functions as well. Um, for me though um, we were asked by a mental health trust um, to do um, some help with the remote care project um, so they had lots of vulnerable people in the pandemic that couldn't come into clinic and those people still had to be monitored so they uh, developed something called a blue box solution and the blue box solution would me measure sort of some really basic um, things like oxygen and blood pressure but they did needed people to come on site then and actually sort of record those results manage all the data and then understand whether the project had been a success or not because it was the first of its kind um, so we provided the people to do that um, and then they've since rolled that out to lots of other organizations and that's really nice to know that we were sort of instrumental in the project being a success to the point that the pilot was then rolled out across the country well wow must be so um so rewarding knowing that you've been part of all these yeah. all these projects it's really amazing so i suppose in terms of the you know um on the side of kind of how we how evolution are helping you in your career so i suppose progression is really important and the training that you, you're offered to enable you to add this value to the nhs so alex could you tell us a little bit about the progression path that you know and the journey you've been on since joining team nhs yeah sure um so obviously, as I said, I started off as a fresh grad. Uh, I remember talking to you, Nick, two years ago now, I think, in that January yeah. time. Um, and what I really liked straight away was it's clear to, to see where I can get to with the amount of work I need to put in. So everything's laid out really visible. You know what you need to do to achieve your next promotion and to achieve what you what you want to do. There's no ceiling in that, in that sense. Um, everything's clearly set out. There is the whole concept of the more you put in, the, the more you truly get out. So, for instance, I started as a, as a grad and um, started being an account delivery consultant is what we called it back then. I don't know if that is the title still to this day, Nick, um, and worked myself, you know, all the way up from there through to senior to principal and now to, to business manager with my next promotion around, around the door is actually being tomorrow. So. I've come through the ranks pretty quickly, but that's from the sheer amount of graft and effort you can put in, but you can do it in that amount of time. And that's that's something that I want people to know. Um, I'm in a very fortunate position now where I've actually been given the trust to actually take on two people under myself. So I now have management responsibilities as well. And to be given that opportunity at such a young age with, you know, being given the trust by the company, you know, makes me feel extremely valued. Um, and it is doable. It's doable for anyone to do. It just takes that amount of work and, and effort. But also because we do have such a good training function. So we have a dedicated training team at Evolution and um, two great trainers who have been in the business, done the job prior and know the culture, know what you need to do to do well. And they are now coaching and training us. That starts from when you're a trainee. So you'll have a full training program all the way up until, you know, man and Brad's level. Now we still get training. We still get monitoring. We still get coaching support because that's really important for ongoing development. Um, so I think that's a major function which is is one of our benefits to being how we can continuously improve we're never left alone we're never you know even if you do continuously rise through, through, the, through the organization we're always there to be supported by these training teams i think that's really beneficial as well um but it is it's, it's one of them where you know reach out to nick and nick can fully explain this is what you need to do to get to this position and it's it's really everyone knows in the, in the company what you need to do how you can do it um it's just really transparent 
fab okay thank you and brad could you give us a bit of an overview then of what an average day looks like for you sure i think um the best way to do this is to, to break it down into three elements i would say um so the first thing really is connecting interim digital specialists with the nhs clients specifically for me in the midlands region and that's essentially focused around enhancing the initial capabilities that they've got within their team to deliver some key pieces of work. Um, the second thing I'd say is introducing NHS stakeholders to the podcast concept as a way to demonstrate that we are true market experts mm -hmm. and to show that we actually put relationships in the front, in the forefront of our minds in terms of our business strategy. Um, and the third thing I would say that's always on our mind is winning opportunities to support NHS organisations that we haven't actually been fortunate to support as of yet. They're the three elements that I would say that we're doing every day. Um, you know, to summarise that, variation is a big thing. You know, This job that we're doing, it's no day is the same. Every day is, is very different. There's a lot of variety. I would say my ability is definitely being tested every day and challenged, which means that I am learning every day. Um, I would also say, you know, completed my LLB degree, but you know, I, would, I would say the stuff I've learned in recruitment has actually fine tuned a lot of my skills that I learned from that degree. And learning from the commercial world actually takes your skill set to the next level than what you learn in a classroom. Fab. That's great. Thank you. And Bernie, so a bit of a, um, a question around what's somebody that's joining your team. So anyone that's watching this now that's thinking, you know, what could a career in this team offer? What can somebody earn in the first few years of work? So I thought I might be asked this question. And so I, <laughs> I went to someone on the team. So because I, I, I don't really like um, sort of pulling figures out of thin air and sort of over promising. Um, having worked in recruitment for 17 years, people do sort of say, oh, you're only at 100 grand in your first year. And it just, I'd rather always be really realistic about what earnings can be rather yeah. than over egg the pudding and then someone be disappointed. So I took um, someone on the team who's got a, a sort of a four to, to five um, grand weekly book, which is mm -hmm. very achievable in that year. Um, and that person has had um, three, um, just four, nearly four promotions. So their base mm -hmm. has gone up on four occasions, as well as their um, as well as their longevity to be able to increase the commission. So yeah. roughly speaking, it's going to be about forty five to fifty k that that person will come out on um, in total this year. Um, and I think that you know that is really, really realistic and really achievable. Um, in second year on that, I would hope to see sort of figures like sort of 60 growing to 70. Brad and Alex are probably two people that have hit even higher than that. And I suppose it's, you know, it's without sort of divulging people's sort of personal income. Um, they've they've been really achieving the sort of the, the higher echelons of the commission um, uh, scheme and then also achieved all of their promotions. Um, if you have one example of someone that's done that on the team, it feels like it's an outlier. Both yeah. Brad and Alex have achieved that in a very short amount of time by sort of by year two. Um, and we're gradually growing lots of other examples of people that are earning above that sort of 50K in the first year. But I would say that's a really, really realistic figure between 45 and 50K in the first year. Brilliant, thank you, that's great. And I suppose a question about the culture on your team then, then now. So, Alex, if you were to sum up the uh, sum up Team NHS in one word, what, what would it be? You might hate me, Nick. I've come up with two words. Sorry, I couldn't come up with, with one. <laughs> well, no. um, I said family and collaborative. Um, okay. I said collaborative purely because it is one of our company values. But I think as a team, we embed it like no one else at, at the company. I must admit, I don't know if I'm tooting my own horn there. But, you know, the collaboration we see on a daily within the team is, you know, it's something like I've never seen before. Um, and then family ties into that because it is a true family feel, family environment within our team. We all want each other to do well. And that's obviously where the collaboration ties in with as well. Um, it is we all just are happy for each other's success we want us all to be successful because at the end of the day that means the team is being successful and that's that's what we want to be oh fab thanks and what would you say brad um i would say innovative it is one of our company values but when i was sat sitting down and actually thinking of you know a word that really rings true i came up with two and it was collaborative and innovative um i'll let alex take collaborative and, and i'll take innovative but um i would say the reason that we are innovative is because we're changing the way that recruitment is done in the nhs and there's 
two ways that I would say we do that. I would say it's because okay. recruiters are known for chasing jobs. You know, it's a stigma that's attached to the industry, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But what we actually do is we put the relationships first. We don't almost necessarily need to chase jobs because the clients come to us because they can see we're market experts. We've taken the courtesy to build a relationship with them. And then it negates the need to actually pick up the phone and, and mither the life out of people nonstop. Um, I would also say the second thing really is that Evolution historically has been a private sector recruitment agency. You know, we're trying to change the norm and bring some private sector talent across to the public sector and the NHS because we've got such a solid foundation of working of, you know, 18 years plus or whatever it is in the private sector. You know, we're competing with a lot of agencies that have been in this uh, this industry for a long time, but have got the same candidates again and again. We're trying to bring something fresher to the table and create a bit of an attraction to the NHS from private sector. Fab, that's great, thank you. And is there anything that you'd add, Bernie, about the culture on, on Team NHS? I think I loved hearing the word family just then. Um, mm. It's um, it's genuinely, uh, so culture is something that I really, you know, I believe is just so fundamental to the success of any business, be it recruitment or otherwise. And you just want people to be both happy in their daily work as well as in their personal lives. And you can't, you can't sort of, you know, solve everyone's problems and you know make it happy and rosy all of the time but we really 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 do strive to help and support people as they're coming through to continually to um you know to support people as they're as they're learning um people would definitely count themselves friends as well as colleagues um and there's lots and lots of social occasions which we'll have sort of coming up in the diary. But as soon as we've had one, we rebook another to make sure that everyone's sort of got those opportunities to connect personally as well as work professionally successfully together. Fab. That's great. Sounds fab. So um, I suppose, you know, kind of coming to the end of the, you know, the chat really. But I, I wanted to just check if we've got any questions from the audience, Bernie, at this point. There's quite a few, actually. Um, oh, so... Um, first one, um, I think Brad or Alex, if you could answer it, um, do you offer hybrid or flexible working for those on team NHS? Yeah, do you want me to take it, Brad? Go for it. Um, yeah, we do. It's the, the sort of um, short answer you can see. I'm definitely not in an office. I'm in a, a back room at my house currently. Um, one thing to note is currently during training period, so your sort of first, I'd say, six to nine months um, I've got trainees doing four days a week in the office and then the Friday at home which is something we all do post that the flexibility to go to three to two is there it's just the training at the start is much more beneficial being next to people next to your peers next to your coaches and your trainers um, so short answer is yes we also offer flexi time as well so you can do shifts for example 10 till 7 or come in early and finish at four um, docs appointments you know dentist whatever we're, we're all flexible we know life goes on and i think you know the pandemic has has helped that in a way as well so the answer is yes we do we definitely do yeah fab um should i just carry on asking the questions nick yeah yeah that's yeah. okay yeah there's a couple um of what are the skills are, uh what are the skills are you looking at for someone to enter the recruitment industry as a fresher i'm happy to take it or yeah yeah Go for it, yeah um it's it's not necessarily about skills it's about characteristics and behaviors and attitude um so we believe that you know you can't enter the obviously the recruitment industry as a fresher and then have experience can you the two things don't go hand in hand no. so for me it's looking at the attributes that sh someone's shown throughout the uh, their education or things that they've done in their personal life hobbies and things like that um to um, demonstrate that they might be look, having the types of traits that we would want. And that would be things like resilience, perseverance, competitiveness. All of these sorts of types of things are quite um, useful to have in the recruitment industry. Um, that said, there are lots of very quirky sort of backgrounds that people have come from. Um, and, you know, it takes a diverse team to make um you know, to make it a really good place to work. We were actually looking for people from all sorts of different backgrounds. So I wouldn't rule yourself out if you're sort of thinking, oh, I haven't got the skills. 
in fact the opposite um you know reach out to Nicola and see if um you do have the sort of the types of traits and background um that we would be looking for um I'll, I'll ask uh, another question so how are your new uh, new starters trained and targeted from day one who'd like to answer do you want me to go because I've had it quite recently yeah go okay. for it Alex um, so just a bit of background, I was lucky enough to take on two trainees just for Christmas. Um, what, the constant support is just there from day one. So in terms of how the training works, um, they have six to eight weeks with our dedicated training team. So for, for the sort of exiled from the team in a way to go and do that training, but obviously still part of Team NHS. So that is every day with the training team, um, learning the job, learning the tools, learning our ways of how we work. Um, and then they are obviously then put into Team NHS. And from there, we continuously that development. So they have regular meetings every week with their trainers, as well as working with us as a team. Um, in terms of targets and whatnot, the, the, maybe you can answer that more in detail, Bernie, but it's not too target driven. It's more understanding how we work, how our culture is, what we aim to do. Um, there's obviously certain KPIs that we set out, just which will allow them to keep on track to what they, you know, what we want them to achieve, but it's not a, you know, I think there's a there's a sort of presence in, in sort of recruitment, a hundred phone calls a day. That is not the environment we we have or we set at all. So um there is obviously KPI can set, but it is one of the most supportive environments I think, well, I've ever seen in, in, in any sort of workplace. I don't know if you want to add to that, Bernie. Yeah, absolutely. I think it's really important that when you set targets that they are smart and genuinely smart. So that's specific, mm. measurable, achievable, realistic and time framed. And it's I suppose it's the achievable and the realistic part of that that I'm really, really interested in. If you um, over um, set targets, people are going to feel like they're failing. Um, and if you um, underplay it, people are going to feel like they're not challenged. So getting that balance right is really, really important. When a trainee comes onto a desk, they don't know what they don't know. And so you need to be able to give them guidance and structure. Um, and that comes in the form of, of like a, a, a day plan. And it might be that at certain points in that day, they're doing certain tasks so that those tasks can be monitored so that they can get feedback and therefore they can grow and develop. So really core things is, is what we would target. So the amount of candidates that you talk to and then add to um, a shared bank, the amount of candidates that you interface with on a video call and qualify, um, and then the amount of clients that you're reaching out to for um, for the podcast and the amount of client interactions that you have on video. So really base level things that are the two things you're going to need to manage a client, you're going to need to manage a candidate in recruitment. And those are the sorts of things that we will KPI um, and target from day one. But to be really, really clear, Day one is a very much a training environment mm. and it's, um, it, it's as, as Alex said, it's off desk, away from the actual sort of real life teams. You get integrated back into the teams at a point when you're ready to do that rather than sort of thrown at the deep end. Um, so it's very much a process in those sort of naught to, to eight weeks. Fab. Thank you. Um, there's one last question, um, okay. and that is, are these sorts of projects assigned to recruiters based on experience and merit? So I think that question came in where we were talking about the different uh, projects that we deliver. Um, I'm happy to take that one if um, mm -hmm. any, anyone can add to it if they want to. But um, the projects are assigned um, based on who's pulled that work. So um, the the way that it works is that each consultant would own a patch and they would have a number of acute trusts and NHS customers within that patch. So for example, Alex works around the Greater Manchester region and Brad works around the East Midlands region. And any work that they pull within that geography, they then deliver. And they're the best people to be able to deliver that work because they've built up a relationship with the customer, they've understood the requirements, and then they have the desire to go out and fulfil the requirements on that project. So rather than it being that uh, work come, comes in and someone else fulfils it, you both, as a 360 recruiter, you both pull your own business and then deliver to it. I hope that um, answers that question. Fab. And was that was that all the questions for, for yeah, tonight? That's yeah, that's everything fab. that's been there. Yeah. Okay, fab. So I suppose you know, in terms of like to sum up, many of the people that I speak to, you know, daily are put off by cold calling, unrealistic expectations. 
the exaggerated earning potential. Um, so hopefully, you know, from listening to this webinar, you can, you know, get a feel for yourself that it's, you know, very much the opposite to the way that we, we do things at Evolution. So um, just to reiterate, Bernie and her team have been so successful, the, the hiring again. So we're looking for another um, intake that's going to be joining in April. So if you're interested in learning more about these opportunities, please reach out. We'll have an informal chat and I can tell you more. Um, connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, on the screen now, there's a QR code. So that will take you to, we've, it's called our Graduate Career Support Network. It's not exclusive for graduates. So if you're listening to this and you're not a recent graduate, that's okay. Join, um, and me and Bernie will be in there to answer any questions. We'll also be posting job opportunities and sharing some hints and tips as well. Um, so that brings us to the end of the webinar. So thanks everyone for joining us today. Hope you find it really useful and look forward to hearing from you soon. Thanks, everyone. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everyone. everyone. Take care. Bye. Bye-bye.